Have you ever wondered how Uber can tell you how far away your driver is? Or how DoorDash can tell you the ETA on your food delivery? The answer, of course, is spatial data. Stay tuned to learn more. Hi, my name is Andy Woods, and I'm a senior product manager at Cockroach Labs. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about spatial data and indexing. Spatial data is really just another way to talk about location data. So you might be surprised that many of the different uh, apps and services that take advantage of location data or spatial data. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of those workloads, how the data impacts those workloads, and we'll give a few examples. Uh, you might already be familiar with several of the most common ones. Every time you go to look for the nearest gas station, you're using spatial data and indexing. Every time you're trying to find that best, most perfect pizza slice in your neighborhood, you're using spatial data. Let's dive in and look at it further. Spatial data, also sometimes referred to as geospatial data, is any data about location. Uh, that's obviously a lot of different ways we could use location data in our apps and services. And so um, we're really gonna break it down into uh, two spatial data types. Uh, the first is called geographic data. Geographic data applies to um, anything that uh, points, lines, polygons, um, anything that applies and can be mapped to a sphere. Now, we, we typically are talking about the Earth when we're talking about geographic data. So um, you'll frequently hear about latitude and longitude. Uh, GPS data is a really good example of geographic data. The other main type of special data is geometric data. Geometric data is also points, lines, and polygons, but it's mapped on a two-dimensional flat surface. So a good example of this might be the floor plan of a building. The first type of workload that comes to mind is Internet of Things, or IoT. Any physical device with a sensor that can send data to a database is a good example of something that might generate an IoT workload. We could see examples of this with uh, location metadata, so uh, where are these devices being accessed in the world, um, as well as um, you know, using sensor data to inform personalized experiences, like what is the best route for you to take on your drive home. Other important workloads would be transportation and logistic workloads. Do you wanna know if your Amazon package is going to arrive before the holidays? Uh, do you wanna keep an eye on that shipment of important materials that's coming from Tokyo to San Francisco? Uh, spatial data can help you track and understand this footprint. Another important usage is with environmental technology. Uh, for example, one of our customers is really interested in thinking about how they can minimize their carbon footprint. How can they take their goods and service, their goods that are in warehouses and find the most efficient route to get them to their customers? Uh, how can they do this in a way that minimizes the impact of climate change? These are all really important, interesting ideas for, for how you can use spatial data. And the list, as you can imagine, is, is in fact pretty endless. There's, there's you know, near infinite different ways you can use location data or spatial data to help you uh, build important workloads that answer the most pressing questions from your customers. Until very recently, spatial data and workloads could not be used with distributed SQL cloud-native databases. That's not the case anymore. CockroachDB now supports geometric and geographic spatial data types. This means that we can now offer support for any of the workloads previously mentioned in this video. However, rather than inventing our new, own, individual, and customized syntax, we're taking advantage of the rich ecosystem present from PostGIS, and we're implementing the same syntax. This means you can use all of those familiar built-ins and functions that you're used to. However, you can get them with a scalable and resilient database. If you have questions about spatial workloads or data, please ask them in the comments below. If you'd like to get started using CockroachDB and Spatial, you can also follow the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and we appreciate your time.